how hard should you work? Well, that's a really difficult question. If you're going to die tomorrow, and then you probably shouldn't work very hard today at all. So one, one thing you might say is that the degree to which you should work hard is dependent on your assumptions about the stability of the future. We actually know this to be true because if you put people in <coughs> wildly uncertain circumstances, they discount the future, which is exactly what you should do, right? It only makes sense to store up goods for future consumption if the future is likely to be very similar to the past and the present. You need a stable society for that. And conscientiousness only works in, in a stable society. Because all you do otherwise, if you're piling up goods, which is kind of what conscientious people do, is leaving them there for the criminals to take, or waiting for the next chaotic upheaval to wipe out everything that you've stored. And so even conscientiousness is a kind of guess. Hard-working people say, well, you know, uh, sacrifice the present for the future. That's great, as long as the future is going to be there and you can predict it. But if it's not going to be there and it's unpredictable, then the right response is take what you can take right now while the getting's good. Now, you know, obviously there are troubles with that too, and I'm speaking, you know, I'm, I'm offering rough rules of thumb, but I'm trying to provide you with some indication of how and why these difference in value structures exist, because they're applicable in different environments. You know, sometimes in a dangerous social environment, it's not obvious that being an extroverted person is a good idea. Because extroverted people, they stand out, especially if they're extroverted and creative, right? Because not only are they noisy and, and dominant and assertive, they're also colorful and, and flamboyant and provocative. Well, that's great if you're in a society that rewards that sort of thing, but if you have you know, if you're ruled by a, an authoritarian king who wants absolutely no threat whatsoever to his stability ever, then dressing in gray and shutting the hell up is a really good survival tactic. So the utility of the trait depends on the structure of the environment that surrounds it. And that's why there's variability in traits. And so you, you have to be careful when you're thinking about it from a strict scientific perspective to make the assumption that Positioning at any place on the normal distribution is preferable, preferable to positioning anywhere else. Now, one exception to that, maybe, might be IQ. Because one of the things that you can see in IQ, with IQ is that people with higher IQs seem to do better. But that's also only true in complex societies. And then there's another problem that seems to emerge with IQ. And I don't know exactly what to make of this, but we know that as women's IQ increases, the probability that they're going to be to remain without a mate also increases because women tend to mate across or up dominance hierarchies and so if you're a woman with an IQ of 130 then you've already eliminated about 95 percent of the men and that's only using one criteria that's just straight intelligence and so there also might be limitations to the to the utility of intelligence with regards to reproduction that we don't really understand very well yet 